Hey guys, Warm Racer 08 here. We're back with another jQuery lesson. Um, today's lesson is going to be uh, we're going to build a dynamic um, copyright statement to add to your website or your client's website. And then you'll never have to change it again if you've got a static HTML site or something like that. And really, this was inspired by, and, and we're going to use some of Adam's code here from Develop PHP. He did a really neat tutorial here. Um, uh, programming a dynamic JavaScript clock uh, to the, to add to your web page and then I've just kind of expanded on that where we're gonna add uh, let me just show you we're gonna create a dynamic copyright statement that's gonna have the the month the date and then we're using Adam's timer function here to uh, to show the time as well so and this works in in all the browsers we've got it here and this is Chrome uh, you can see the clock's running. Uh, we got it here in Firefox. Clock's still running. And initially, I showed it to you there in uh, Internet Explorer. So let's uh, let's jump into Dreamweaver here, and let me adjust uh, Dreamweaver so you can see what's going on. All right. So I just took a a template page from Dreamweaver's templates stuck this in here so we have a footer just uh, to use as an example and so let's look at the code um, you're gonna need the jQuery library um, which here I have it uh, just in the same folder uh, as my document here and then also you're gonna need your JavaScript file that I put in a separate file uh, that's gonna control the copyright stuff and then in your footer Right here, let's see here, in our footer, this, this P element right here, this is this your company all rights reserved. I've given it an ID of uh, dynamic copyright. And then I've added two spaces and then this text, the your copyright all rights reserved. And I don't, I think just for uh, the little spice, I added uh, a color <laughs> to uh to the copyright uh, to a span that we're going to dynamically generate with JavaScript so that it ends up as a different color um, right here I made it a different color just so it make it easier for you guys to see than the text that's in there but you don't have to do that you know you guys can modify it do whatever you want with it but anyway that's the CSS and then uh, as you can see though there's no span there that's because we're going we're gonna to generate that with JavaScript jQuery so let's take a look at this at the code here alright so as usual our document dot ready function inside of our document dot ready once once the documents loaded jQuery is gonna uh, fire this off because inside of here we've got another function called update time and down here at the very bottom we're gonna call that a couple things we're going to create a variable called date time div when the document is loaded this is what's going to happen this date time div is going to use this is just plain old JavaScript it's going to grab the element with an ID of dynamic copyright and it's going to grab the inner HTML the HTML is within that div right here this ID of dynamic copyright is going to grab these two spaces and this text then what's going to happen we're going to call the function update time so we've stored that that HTML here in this variable now we're not going to get back to that until the very end but anyway so then this function update time runs we're going to use a recursive function uh, and JavaScript set time out so that we don't get a, a build up a queue uh, because these are ac these aren't actually going to be a hundred percent accurate um, just depends on how fast the browser is going to process it. But by using this set timeout, we're going to prevent um, anything from queuing up and then possibly locking the browser up. So we're going to use JavaScript set timeout function and a, an anonymous function that's just called function. <laughs> and we're going to create some variables here. All right, we're going to create a variable D that's going to be a new date object. Now, a lot of this, uh, this here, this DM. Uh, hours, minutes, second. These variables here. This all came from Adam's tutorial. If you haven't watched his tutorial, 
over here at develop PHP right here uh, tut ID 1056 go over and watch it he explains all this real well anyhow we're gonna we're gonna create this new date object we're gonna create these variables here which uh, Adam explains this one this sup is one of mine this is gonna be uh, what I'm calling a superscript so we're gonna get uh, this right here this th or rd or st or whatever it is depending on the day of the month this is going to be our superscript so I've just set it to to uh, blank or null value for now um, of course here's Adams uh, getting hours and minutes and seconds and then for our date we're going to create four more variables we're going to have a current date which is going to get the date from our date object the current month, which is going to get the month from our date object. Current year, which is going to get the full year from our date object, not just the last two. And then the current day, which is going to get the date from our date object here on uh, line 13. Line 13. Um, then we're going to create two, two arrays. We're going to have a, an array that is going to be, um, it's going to be called day names, and it's going to hold the seven days of the week. We're going to have a, an array called month names that's going to hold the 12 months, the 12 month names. All right, and then in this if else block here, this is how we determine the the st, the nd, the rd for our superscript. So, if our current day is going to be, is it explicitly? If it's not explicitly, but if it's equal to 1, 21, or 31, then our superscript is going to be equal to st. If it's equal to 2 or 22, it's going to be equal to ND. If it's equal to 3 um, or 23, it's going to be RD. Otherwise, it's going to be TH. So that should should understand that pretty easily. Uh, and here we've given a little attribution here to uh, Adam. This is all his code from his JavaScript clock, digital clock tutorial. Um, you know, we need to give everybody's respect copyrights and give everybody credit where credit is due uh, I didn't change any of this I just used oh I tell you what I did change a little bit um, in this if block here for the hours I think Adam had uh, if hours was less than 10 uh, H is equal to uh, 0 plus H and that puts a leading 0 in front of your hours I didn't like that so I got rid of it but Nonetheless, Adam still gets his copyright, and uh, I'd like to uh, thank him for the tutorial he did anyway. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even thought of this. So, Anyhow, go watch his video, developphp.com. Here's the link right here, and uh, he explains all this real well. Uh, then, what we're going to do here is we're going to create another variable called current date and time. Now, this variable is going to hold all of all of our code thus far so that we can stick this back into that div down in the footer so that you get your nice copyright statement so what I've done here and then is we've just started out this is essentially just a big long string of HTML and variables that's going to be printed back into this div so like I said before with this span tag I started out with a span because I wanted mine to be a different color uh, than the, the current text that was down here, this this green. Uh, you can change yours however you want. So, we got our span tag and then a copyright symbol. And we're, we're concentrating all these things together. So, when you have a string literal, we've got to add it to our variable names and such. So, we've got the span and the copyright plus a blank space, plus, okay, here we're getting the day name, the name of the day, at the current day index. So we have to go back up here and look. Um, the, if we remember, the day is going to be, JavaScript's going to grab it from our date object, and then our day name is going to come from these indexes, this being 0, Saturday being 7. So 0 to 7. And so that's what this is grabbing here, our day name at our current day, which is right here. We'll determine blah, 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 whatever it is. Plus a comma, plus our month name, 
for our current month. Same same thing. We store these all the days and all the months in an array, and we're just picking them out wherever they match, whatever index they match. Then plus another blank space, then plus the current date, okay, and then plus here's where we're putting in some HTML for our superscript. We're going to use a sub tag, and then I don't know how my, my lines got off here. It shouldn't be that far away. Okay. All right. Then plus the sub variable, which is going to be one of these here, the stndrd for the day. And then a closing tag and a comma. And then a space plus the current year plus, and here's all of Adam's time function. The time, the hours, plus a colon, the minutes, colon, seconds, a space, and then the AM, PM, the DM. And then we're going to close off our span tag. And then back when we first started, remember this variable here, this date time div that, that holds, this is holding what's currently in the div when the page is loaded. Um, this right here, this your, these two spaces and the your copy, all rights reserved. Okay, so yeah, then we're going to add that to all this other stuff, right? Okay, great. You with me so far? Okay, and then we're just going to say that the document dot get element by ID. The I guess I could have done this with jQuery, but anyway, um, the the document element with the ID of dynamic copyright. We're going to write to it using inner HTML. The current date and time, which is this variable here, which holds all of our other junk. Then, here's the recursive part. We're going to call the function again, update time. This function here, update time. And we've got to close off our functions here. This is going to close off the set time out. This um, value, <laughs> I can't think of the proper term, this value is 1000 milliseconds this is what's gonna it's not gonna allow it to call itself more than once every one second and that's how we get the seconds to tick off now th I did this a little bit differently than than Adam's tutorial on there and this is probably I guess is writing the month and everything over and over and over and over again rather than just the seconds but I couldn't figure out a way to do that so but anyway uh, here's the finished project. Let's refresh it. Page loads. There it is. November 17th, 2010. 318.50. Yay. Again, I'd like to thank uh, Adam for the, for his uh, programming tutorial with using JavaScript for the clock part. Um, I'll put a link in the sidebar for where you can download the source code to this. And I hope you guys enjoyed.